Welcome to Bet On It NFL Edition. This is week six. Let's bring in Marco, Joe, and Teddy. What's up, guys? As you can tell, I am not in my office. And unfortunately, Joe Ranieri is in his. So if we lose power today, uh, we're just going to do the show without him. Uh, but Godspeed to all of you there in Florida. I hope you guys make it out of this storm safely. Mm-hmm. Gentlemen, let's get right into these prime time games because we have a lot to unpack on today's show. Marco D'Angelo, you are not up first. In fact, it is going to be Joe Ranieri. San Francisco, Thursday night like football. This. They are three and a half point favorites at, well, my lone survivor loser last week, Seattle, 47 and a half. Joe, did you get to catch any of that game versus the Giants? Because Marco basically all but nailed that uh, blocked field goal there at the end. Yeah, no, it was uh, it was interesting, wasn't it? And, uh, you know, here we were thinking during the week that Geno Smith was going to be the problem. And while well, he, he was to a certain degree, uh, but so is that Seattle uh, defense. And that is really the question here. We've seen this total in this game uh, get boosted up 47 and a half originally, uh, now 49s. And I agree with the move to the over with these two teams. Not a great spot, obviously, uh, for Seattle right now as they are kind of licking their wounds both uh, on the defensive side. Still got some key injuries there, but also, uh, of course, offensively here where they get to be a little one-dimensional, especially if they're playing from behind, which is exactly what I think they're going to be doing in this game they're going to have to go very pass heavy and they can certainly compete against this 49ers uh, team that has not quite looked like the powerhouse that everyone expected them to be here this is kind of unusual territory for them to be sitting what two and three at this particular point uh losing games that they don't often lose but it's early in the season here. We know the talent is there. Uh, they should get a little bit healthier here over the next couple of weeks. And I do think uh, they can do exactly what we saw Jared Goff do to this defense. And everyone made a big deal about the head coach uh, coming over as the from the D.C. from Baltimore. He was going to be this great defensive mining guy. Well, injuries have kind of set them back, and they haven't been shutting down anybody, especially in the passing game. If there was ever a game for Brock Purdy to get right, I think throwing the ball, and for this 49ers offense to get right, I think this is the game, Cal. Uh, We don't often look at a whole lot of overs uh, in these uh, Thursday night games, these primetime games, but... Yeah, I like the 49ers in Seattle to go up and uh, up and over here. Seattle's defense has been bad. I think both of these teams are going to look to uh, to throw the ball on the secondaries. And when it's all said and done, I agree with the original move up and over the total. And that's the way I'd look at this. All right, let's go to London. Another early start there for Marco and Teddy on the West Coast, but 9.30 a.m. on the East Coast. Jacksonville is a two-point underdog versus the Chicago Bears. Total 44 and a half in this one. Ah, boy, this one's uh, really tough to unpack. So that's probably why the guys left it for me. Just leaving me with the scraps here. Uh, And as Teddy likes to say, I am not wanting to buy on the Jacksonville Jaguars right now. They are just two and nine in their last 11 games. And hey, kudos to Caleb Williams. Had probably one of the best games he's had so far in an easy win over Carolina. And I'm not sure I really am buying the Bears or if maybe they've just faced some really soft defenses. And speaking of those soft defenses, that's exactly what the Jaguars had. They've given up 388 yards to every single offense they faced, not named the Cleveland Browns. But those Chicago Bears have some issues within themselves. We know exactly what we're getting from them defensively. And now they're traveling to London, kind of feeling fat and sassy, as Marco would like to say. But hang on, that's where the Jaguars actually win football games. Remember last season, they beat the Falcons and covered against the Bills there. I don't know what to make of this Jacksonville team after they basically blew that 14-point lead to the Colts and somehow got very lucky to hit that long field goal on Sunday. But, man, this is a tough one. I think this looks like a dead-on, boring, under-type game, a 17-14 final, if you will. And, frankly, that's the only way I can look in this one. So I'm going to go under 
44 and a half. Teddy, let's move along to, well, not even, even an exciting game. This one seems awful as well. We just mentioned those Giants are off a nice win. How are you seeing Sunday night football? Well, I mean, last week, well, we didn't think Seattle and the Giants was going to be the most exciting game, and it turned out to be a legit thriller and a heck of a game to watch. I wouldn't be surprised at all if this week's Sunday night game between the Bengals and the Giants is every bit as exciting and every bit as down to the wire. This is a Cincinnati team. Look, they're one and four. All right. They're tied, I think, uh, ranked number 25th in defensive yards per play allowed. And they're laying more than a field goal on the road. <laughs> uh, not with my money, they're not. You know, Joe Burrow said the truth after the game last week. Quote, we're not a championship level team right now. We're not. I like to think we'll come back and improve throughout the season to get to that point. But right now we are not and we have to get better. I know exactly how we're one and four. We're not making plays at the end of the game to go and win it. Definitely not in disbelief. I know exactly what's happening. That's not a vote of confidence. Of course, this offense worked last week. The defense hasn't worked. <laughs> All right. So we're talking about laying more than a field goal on the road with a one and four team that has a bad defense. That's not really my MO necessarily. And of course, even when they win, since he's struggling to win one by margin, you know, last year, a third of their games were wins by a field goal or less. You know, a third of their wins uh, came by a field goal or less. So it's not like they're consistently putting teams away. Meanwhile, G-Men, they're coming off the best offensive game of the season, like by far. Remember that first drive, they get down to the goal line, have a 102-yard uh, fumble return touchdown. That could have demoralized them. Instead, they drove down the field, tied the game at 7-7. Didn't matter without neighbors. Didn't matter without Singletary. This offense is finding their way. Tyrone Tracy can make plays. Darius Slayton can make plays. And... You know, we're talking about a team that rolled up more than 420 total yards of offense, more than 37 minutes of possession last week. You know, the defense had seven sacks, by the way. That pass rush living up to potential. I'm expecting a close game. I like the points with the G-men. I expect this one to be, I like so many other Cincinnati games, to be decided by a field goal or less. And that, my friends, is why I'm not taking... <laughs> Cincinnati and Survivor this week, even though it's been suggested to me. Last but certainly not least, Monday night prime time. Marco D'Angelo, the Buffalo Bills. Uh oh, are they in trouble? They might be only two and a half point road favorites at the newly head coach New York Jets. Forty and a half is the total here. Have they announced who's going to be the interim head coach yet? Yes, they have. I don't have the name from me. I think it's the defensive uh, Albrecht. coordinator. But... Albrecht. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. You, I appreciate you. that. The resident Jets fan should know yes. who yes. the interim head coach is. Uh, and if I was, you know, maybe studying sports handicapping instead of hurricane models, I would have also had that answer and not had to put Marco on the spot. But we're going to go get right into it. Marco, do you think uh, this is like one of those situational plays that you and I love so much? When a head coach gets fired, you know, we almost just can't help ourselves. Oh, it's always, you know, the team there where it gets fired generally has a bump. The rest of the team plays harder because, you know, one, either they didn't like the coach or two, they want to prove that it was the coach that was the problem and not them. We saw this last year when the Raiders fired their uh, head coach. They went out and proceeded to win their next game. But, man, I just can't get past. There is nothing more Jet-like than the Jets firing their head coach on their way back from London. Uh, game, you know, you got the travel to deal with. Normally teams that play in London get a bye week the following week. They don't. And this is the biggest game of the year for them because as bad as it is they're only one game behind buffalo which means if they win this game on monday they're tied with buffalo but would own the tiebreaker so what do you do go ahead and just let's fire the coach this week i don't get it you know i would have waited till after this game but we'll see how it plays out what i'm looking at in this game though you know we're looking at buffalo that suddenly has lost two games in a row and more concerning for the Buffalo Bills is, you know, the last two games, they played good teams. Obviously, they played Baltimore and Houston. 
But the concern is they only scored 10 and 20 points in those two games. That's not the Buffalo Bills. When you think of the Bills, you're not thinking about them winning games defensively. You're thinking of Josh Allen moving the ball up and down the field. Now, as far as the Jets go, you're never going to think about that. And Aaron Rodgers has not shown anything so far that he is able to move this team up and down the field. Remember two weeks ago, they only scored nine points against Denver, albeit it was in a rainstorm, but still it was nine points against Denver. Uh, I'm concerned about this team being able to score. I'm concerned about all the distractions that they're going to go through this week with the coaching change and being a Monday night game. I just don't trust them, even though they're going to have that bump with the new head coach. I think if they're going to win this game, they have to win it with their strength. And their strength has always been the defense, and that's where I'm going to go with this game. I'm going to look at this game to go under the total. We got the under last Monday night here on the show, and I'm going to come right back again with the under for Monday night football because we also find the Buffalo Bills. When you think about the Bills, you think of offense. But actually, since 2022, playing on the road, If you played just blindly the unders in Buffalo Bills games, 16-4 and to the under on the road with the Buffalo Bills since 2022. And we'll couple that with, over that same time period, the New York Jets playing division games. They are 11-2 and to the under. Let's go ahead and take under on Monday Night Football. Going to look for a defensive game, tight game. If you put the gun to my head, Kelly, yeah, I would lean to the Jets. But there's no gun to my head, and I'm not going to do it. Maybe the Jets owner had a gun to his head by somebody uh, that's under center, but that's to be determined. We'll see how this plays out. Uh, I'm sure it just slipped Marco's mind to uh, remind everybody that those lovely under stats came from this week's edition of the Gold Sheet. You guys can get the Gold (laughs) Sheet over on the Wager Talk homepage now. Uh, All jokes aside, we're going from the Gold Sheet to some gold because we've got the Greek gambler coming in with his little bucket. Let's see if he's got his leprechaun hat on maybe. There he is, except he's not wearing green, he's wearing red. VR, do you have a Phillies future we don't know about or is that just a homer move? No, it's just the only hat I had up here today. I had a Dodgers one too, but it's a little crooked. Like I bought it new, but it's crooked. It doesn't go on. I'm gonna end up tossing it, but I I leave it for a little decoration to get my money's worth. There you go. Just making Not, sure that I didn't miss out on some uh, MLB playoff bet. Future, no, the only future on. hat that I, I, I did, the San Francisco 49ers. I've been wearing that to give that away, that I have a future on the Niners. Doesn't look good sitting at two and three, but there's still only seven plus 750, Kel. I actually got him at plus 650 like a few weeks ago. So I thought by now it'd be like 12 to one, 13 to one. But they're just that good on paper that they're still only seven and a half to one. So, you know, that that's the only thing right, we were giving away. Speaking of paper, let's uh, see what you got on those sheets. If you guys have never seen VR's notes, they're absolutely meticulous. They are beautiful. (laughs) They are gorgeous. Not like mine that are chicken scratch. But VR, as always, I just let you have the floor and run with it. Give us that NFL Week 6 gold. Thanks, Kelly. I'll start off at the top. Thursday Night Football immediately got down on San Francisco minus three. I gave out two subscribers as a 4% play. Three losses by a combined 10 points. This team is a lot better than their two and three record. I think the minus three and a half shows that. Went through that key number immediately. Let's move on to Sunday's action. Over in Tottenham. Over money on Jacksonville, Chicago. The look ahead was 42. They bet the 43. They bet the 43 and a half. These two have combined for four out of 10 games under the total. So it looks like a little uh, regression, progression type means reversion bet here in Tottenham. Now move on to Arizona. The look ahead was plus five and a half. They also took the plus five there against Green Bay. They're coming off of uh, that San Francisco win. Probably a little recency bias there. They also, also went under. The look ahead was 51. Now they went under 50 also, went under 49 and a half, 49 and 48. Usually you see one point movements, even a little bigger than that, but more when it's around those numbers that really matter, even totals. They move them a half point at a time so they see if there's going to be resistance the other way. Rather than give you an easy middle, they'll get half point increments so they're able to hit it multiple times earlier in the week, even when the limits are a little bit lower. Now move over to Tampa and New Orleans. 
Saints lost three straight, seemed to come out a little bit ahead. People were adjusting their power ratings, I think, just too quickly on the Saints. Again, needed a little bigger sample size than that, but they, the look ahead was Tampa plus two and a half, no longer the case. Tampa came out the favorite. They laid the two and a half. They laid the key three, and now you're looking at three and a half. That matters. When you see them go again through those key threes, through those key sevens, they really matter. Why? We know from the Wong teaser. Wong teasers went 5-0 and last week. Don't overlook free money. They're now 17-6, uh, and six, 74%. Even if you're laying minus 120, you've made a ton of money doing nothing, no handicapping at all, simply betting through key numbers. Move on to the Philadelphia Eagles. Cleveland, 0-3 straight up and against the spread the last three games. A little recency bias there. Look ahead with six. They bet the seven. They bet the eight. When it got the eight and a half and nine, you saw some resistance on Cleveland. So it seems like Philly minus the touchdown is the right side, but anything near double digits, a little bit too high. Move on to Chargers and Denver. A lot of under money. Three of the last four in the series have gone under. Five of the last seven in the series have gone under. But this will be the lowest total over the, in the last 10 games plus between the two. 38 and a half was the look ahead. We're now looking at 36 and a half because they bet under 37 and a half, under 37, under 36 and a half. This one's going to get to 35 probably by the weekend. Then move on to Atlanta off back-to-back -back wins where they scored 62 points. A lot of recency bias in the early moves. This one got up to four and a half. They bet it again. Got up to five and a half. They bet it again. But it's at six and a half that you saw that Carolina resistance. No surprise. You go from three to six, six and a half in an NFL game unless you could truly quantify those three, three and a half point adjustments. Again, there's a lot of injury concerns in the NFL, but more times than not, those get overvalued. And finally, Sunday night football, no surprise here. The New York football giants get steamed. Why? They're coming off a big game where they won as nine point dogs or seven point dogs, something like that on the road in Seattle. But, but pay attention because when they took the five and a half, that was the look ahead. They took the five. Now we're at Cincy minus three and a half even money. They don't want to go to three. That's why. Instead of going to three, they're adding VIG at the three and a half, seeing if there's going to be any takers rather than move to that key three. Pay attention to those numbers. If they go to the three key three, that's a telling sign that the Giants just may be the side. So uh, lines give us a lot of... Uh, information what's going on behind the scenes and again I, whether you follow or fade i just hope you cash them baby and do some damage and of course sunday a late 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 information with kelly and uh we could go over some quick long teasers on sunday that's where i think they offer the most value because that's when the line's usually most efficient at least that's what they tell us the strongest number is the closing line you need efficient numbers if you're betting teasers because you want the game to fall near the number that's how you cash your teaser keep blonging baby it's free money yeah, we'll get into those teasers for the NFL on Sunday. Wager Talks, last call, noon Eastern. VR comes in and brings you all that late gold. VR, before I let you go, tell us what you've got going on over at wagertalk.com. Oh, yeah, I'm going, I'm going, I think, for my fourth or fifth straight NFL 5% plays. I, I'm zeroing in on some of those biggest advantages. Lowered my volume a little bit, and it's working out well. MMA, of course, I got a UFC card already fired a 4% play. I think we gave that out for $5. We'll have a full card by Saturday, up over 150 units in UFC, 17% ROIs. We're printing money. Again, if you're going to bet MMA, you're going to want to know what I'm betting. You're sharp enough to know that. And uh, got some college football action for Saturday. We just saw everything, baseball, soccer, tennis. It doesn't matter. If there's an inefficient number, we're going to look to bet it, Kelly. So, uh jump on over. This is a great time to, to jump on board and uh, ride the steam train. All right. Make sure you guys are following VR on TikTok, Instagram, and of course, X at Greek underscore gambler. Next up, we're going to get Teddy's just the tip on which team we need to sell. Joe, is he high enough? I'm not sure he is. Marco's trap game. And no, oh, by the way, I may have a square barking dog for all of you. The good news for my survivor picks this week, the deli is not open uh maybe if my partners would have listened to that segment last week okay i'm done i'm done i'm done i'm done i'm done we got the chiefs home on monday night kelly i never felt so bad winning a sandwich game last week i was texting you during the game truly am sorry but it, it is what it is and gonna disappoint everybody we don't have a sandwich this week in the nfl 
We almost had a sandwich, and I'll tell you why I pumped the brakes on it. The sandwich spot was going to be New England. It was a perfect spot for a sandwich game until we found out we're going to have Drake May as starting quarterback this week. So I just didn't want to use the sandwich game with a rookie quarterback making his first start. So there you have a little segue from what would have been the sandwich had uh, they didn't name uh, Drake May the starter. So we pivot and we go to the next best play. And I do like this play a lot. This is the trap game in the trap is Atlanta. They're going to fall into the trap because I don't know how this team cannot look past Carolina this week. I know it's a division game, but I'm sorry, people. Look at the last four games that Atlanta has played. You can't get more four more marquee games than they had. They played four weeks back on Monday Night Football against Philadelphia, and they come back at the end of the game, pull out the miracle win, Then the, and that was a 22-21 win. Then three weeks ago, Another primetime game. They play the Chiefs on Sunday night football. They did everything but win that game, 22-17. to We all know there was another questionable call in that game that saved the Chiefs. Uh, two weeks ago, they play the Saints. Huge division game. They needed that game. And what do they do? They were trailing the entire game until the final gun when they hit a long field goal to win it at the buzzer. And then last week, back on Prime time, Thursday night football game, another thriller, miracle comeback, uh, horrible clock management down the stretch uh, by Tampa Bay, lets them go back down the field, tie it at the end of regulation and win it and cover with a touchdown in overtime. How do you, you know, look at Carolina coming off a 36 to 10 beatdown and be serious with them? I can't do it. This is a trap for them. And you're asking the Atlanta Falcons, a team that since 2022 is just 4-13 and 13 on the road, straight up, 4-13. and 13. So not only are we asking them to do something they don't do often, win on the road, we're asking them to do it by a margin. I'm not doing it. I know Carolina's ugly. You guys gave me a lot of grief before the game on – the uh, Giants play last week. That's fine. Just come back like you guys did after the game and talk smack if you win or give credit where it's due, and you guys did. Kudos to you guys. I appreciate that. I'm going with an ugly one, Kelly. Are you following along? Carolina plus the points. And, oh, by the way, is a divisional home dog as ugly as Carolina has been since 2022? 4-1 against the spread. Divisional home dog. Give me Carolina. Oh, I know, Marco, because I read the gold sheet. Uh, and that's why I don't like division dogs on, or division favorites, excuse me, on the road in Survivor. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I have rules against these things. And, and even when Ralph provided me with some of the math, I still am going to hold strong. Nah, somebody who's not probably holding strong. Joe, how you doing over there? Uh, you need a little bit of, you know, something to help you out, get you through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, as this hurricane comes uh, barreling through here, uh, Kel, yes, I uh, I could use a little help. Uh, might as well start baking the brownies before the power goes out. Anyway, let's talk here, if we can't, uh, Cal, about a uh, game that, uh, shockingly enough, uh, to me, is not high enough for me anyway. And we're going to go over to London and you had talked about this game earlier, like the full game under. I'm going to look at it a little differently. I don't think I've had a first half play yet because Marco has pretty much uh, ruined that for us last year. So uh, this is my first first half play this year. And we're going to look at the over, Cal, 21 and a half. Now, this full game total opened up at 42 and a half, and it's already been bet up to 44, 44 and a half. And listen, I've been watching, and nobody has been a bigger critic of Caleb Williams than I have. Uh, not a big believer in him. I was an even less believer in Shane Waldron, the offensive coordinator for the Chicago Bears here. But I can tell you, getting Keenan Allen back in the lineup there has absolutely been beneficial to this team. And now over the last couple of weeks, Caleb Williams is looking a lot more comfortable then he did the first couple of games this year. In fact, it's all about the blitz. 
Uh, he has completed 17 of 19 for over 200 yards and two touchdowns when teams have blitzed him over the last couple of weeks. So he is getting more comfortable. They're pushing the ball downfield. He is completing. He was three of four in that game uh, last week for 89 yards and two touchdowns on passes over 20 yards. They're taking on the single worst pass defense in the NFL in Jacksonville, who, by the way, while they finally put it together, I mean, let's Jacksonville is terrible. There is no doubt about it. But they've also underperformed a lot. Divisional home game against the Colts last week was not an easy game. Back up against the wall, 0-4. What we got from Jacksonville last week at home is something I think they can build a part of because that team is more than capable of dropping 30 points on anybody with the talent that they have. I think they can build off of that. They have not one but two games back-to-back. -back. I think they take on the Patriots in London again next week. So there is no team more comfortable with going overseas than the Jacksonville Jaguars. And I think both these teams – air it out a lot in this game here early and often. I think Chicago will run away with this game, certainly on the ground in the second half. But I also think we're going to have some points here. It would not shock me if it is a 14-10 to 10 game at the breakout, which is exactly what I'm banking on. That's why I'm taking the first half over with the Jags and the Chicago Bears in London on Sunday uh, for that early game. Ooh, Joe. All right. See, why didn't I just have you preview that that boring London game that now all of a sudden you think is not going to be so boring? Teddy, tell me something that's not boring. How about this? Who are we buying? Who are we selling and why? We have a sell this week, and I don't think it's boring to sell the Denver Broncos. I'm comfortable selling the Denver Broncos. Is, is that exciting? I don't know, but I'm going to talk about it. Denver's now three and two. Straight up, 4-1 and one against the spread. They're riding a three-game winning streak. So this is a team that all of a sudden has momentum, has a little bit of a bandwagon, and they've made money for their backers pretty consistently so far this season. But when we look at the bigger picture for Denver moving forward, and again, this isn't about this week necessarily. This is about the next month. This team doesn't have a bye till December. And I say if you bet against Denver every week between now and their bye week, I think you're going to make money. Right now, they have the number two defense in the NFL based on yards per play. They've allowed only 4.4 yards per play. They're number six in the NFL in takeaways. Had the plus three turnover margin last week. But we start to look at who they faced. Well, Geno Smith, I think he was the best QB he's, they faced this year. Justin Fields, they got Baker May Mayfield on a bad day. A struggling, banged up Aaron Rodgers. And last week it was Gardner Minshew and Aiden O'Connell. So it's not like they've been beating up on a bunch of quality teams and quality foes. Their schedule does get tougher over the course of the next month slash six weeks. This three-game winning streak, all three of the teams they beat came in very satisfied, coming off a win, looking past the lowly Broncos. And of course, Last week, you had a 10-0 Raider lead, and then you had a 100-yard pick six, which kind of changed the game pretty significantly. So fact number one, competition is getting tougher for Denver. I'm not convinced they're going to be the number two defense in the NFL and number six in takeaways long term. Fact number two, Bo Nix hasn't really been that good. All right, 5.2 yards per pass attempt. I believe that's number 32 in the league among current starters. Only Deshaun Watson is worse. Nix has thrown more interceptions and touchdowns. This is still a very dicey offense and a defense that's been carrying them, and I don't think the defense is quite as good as the numbers would indicate. And thirdly, guess what you have now in Denver? Cluster injuries on the offensive line. And when you have a rookie QB who's struggling and a team that's being carried on their defense, the one thing you can't have is an offense that's riddled with key injuries up front. I'm selling Denver moving forward next month, next six weeks. I think you'll make, make more money betting against the Broncos than betting on them. Kel? Yeah, I did make I did make some money finally betting against the Broncos or betting on the Broncos, excuse me, last week. But probably going forward, they're going to be, like Teddy said, a sell team. A team I also didn't make money betting against last week was the Baltimore Ravens. But I'm going to do it again this week. 
because that was an absolute travesty not getting to cash that small underdog of the Cincinnati Bengals. And I understand you guys are going to say, oh, Washington's square dog of the week. They've been square for the last four weeks. I bet against them week one with the Bucs, and guess what they've done ever since? That's right. Daniels and that offense have been on a tear. I know Washington's got a very vulnerable defense, and Lamar Jackson has some really nice weapons in Zay Flowers and a pair of tight ends, and of course they have a great running game with Derrick Henry. But I'm not sure the Ravens are as good as advertised, right? As, as I mentioned, that overtime win, somehow, some way, they got it done against their division rival in the Bengals. And now they play the Commanders. And, oh, by the way, they get to travel to Tampa Monday night next week. I think they're overlooking this Washington team. I think everybody, in fact, is overlooking this Washington team who looks really, really good. I think six and a half points is entirely too many, and it would not shock me in the slightest to see Washington actually win this football game. So be careful, all of you wanting to use Baltimore there in Survivor. Give me the Washington Commanders plus six and a half as my barking dog for NFL Week 6. Oh my goodness. Uh, What are we going to do with Okay. Anyway, so I guess he's taking this prop ecologist uh, thing a little serious, guys. So we got the lab coat, we got the stethoscope, but we still have AirPods in. So I don't know if it really works correctly. Well, the, the AirPods work better than this cheap thing on, on Amazon, Kelly. Uh, yes, the, the the doctor will see you now. Uh, let's diagnose these props and uh, prescribe a winner. I promise that'll be the last doctor pun for the rest of the segment. So, yeah, I am a man of my word. Uh, you got to reward the comment section for coming up with fantastic nicknames. So, uh, yes, we're going all in on this. Listen, I'm for it. Uh, own it. I mean, if I had to be anything to do with, well, looking at people's butts, I wouldn't want to tell people that was my job title either. Anyway, so more on the prop side of things. You know, maybe the prop prints wasn't so bad at all, Andy. Maybe it wasn't so bad at all. Could have got you a little crown and like a nice velour suit. No, no, I, I, I like this. Uh, both of the ologists make a lot of money, Kelly. So that's that's what they have in common. So uh, let's let's try and cash. Uh, my, my pick last week was pretty bad on the show. Uh, so let's try and, and regroup. We were 2-0 and on client yeah, plays, I though. Know. So that because was the bright side. Wait, hold on. Let I me know. go off on I the know. prop, Tal, just really quick. So I had Aaron Rodgers in fantasy, and I had picked Kirk Cousins up because Anthony Richardson was hurt. And in hindsight, I probably should have picked up Joe Flacco and kept Kirk Cousins. But Andy thought under one and a half touchdown passes. I looked at the game. I kind of liked the Bucks. I had the Bucks in a bunch of teasers. I said, all right, I'm going to leave Kirk Cousins on my bench. I would have easily told you to, to to pick up Joe Flacco. I didn't know that was an option, but uh, the, that was one of our official client plays, Kelly, was Flacco over his uh, passing yard. Yeah, when Flacco's in, uh, take the over. The guy just chucks the ball all over the place. All right, let's do a winner for this week. Let's go back to uh, Chuba Hubbard. Let's take his rushing yards over 63 and a half. Kelly, since Andy Dalton has taken over, Chuba Hubbard has started three games. He's rushed 52 times for 315 yards for the season with running backs with 60 plus carries only Derrick Henry and Saquon Barkley are averaging more yards per carry than Chuba Hubbard. Jonathan Brooks is still hurt. I the Panthers have no reason to rush this guy back. So as long as Hubbard is performing, I don't see why they would uh, take him off the field. He's the only one getting carries. Miles Sanders only had two carries last week and this is a Falcons team They give up 148 yards rushing per game. That is fourth worst in the NFL. Every single starting running back to face the Falcons has had over 70 yards rushing. Kelly, that includes Carson Steele. So if Carson Steele can get 72 yards rushing, I believe Chuba Hubbard uh, and the Panthers offense can get over. So take Chuba Hubbard over 63 and a half. Uh, That is the prescription for a winner. Take two of these and call me in the morning. Can you also explain to me why Chuba's mom named him Chuba and not Chuba? I mean, at least if it's like phonetically, it would make more sense. 
I, no, I, I I understand that. Uh, Gardner Minshew is is quite easily the most fascinating name. Uh, his his grandfather wanted him to be named Beowulf. That's a true story. And uh, <laughs> the, the, there's just a lot of things going on with Gardner Minshew's name. Unfortunately, he got benched. So hopefully, uh, we see him back on the field. But yes, I agree with you that. Uh, Chuba Hubbard made a lot more sense than Chuba, but whatever, it's the man's name, um, so we'll stay out of that. Let's cash him over 63 and a half, though. Let's do it. Over 63 and a half rushing yards from the proptologist. And normally I'd say from the prop prince to the stat daddy, but can't do that anymore. Ralph Michaels with some TNA up next. Welcome to my NFL TNA play of the week. Two and one now on these NFL TNA plays since we started the new format. And this week, I am going with the New Orleans Saints. A couple of systems I'm going to give you are actually fades against Tampa Bay. But again, either situation gets us to the same side. First off, let's take a look at how teams have done that lost to their opponent the last time they played them. They're coming off a loss like Atlanta, like Tampa Bay is to Atlanta. They're now a favorite going back to 2017. Those teams are only 57, 98, and 3, 36.8% against the spread. So basically a 63.2% fade of Tampa Bay. Play number two also says to fade Tampa Bay. A team that was in a game with at least three lead changes. They weren't a way dog in that game. They ended up losing. And now they're on the road, either as a dog or as a favorite to minus three. Those teams, 20, 36, and three, 35.7% against the spread, or basically a 64.3% fade. We look at the Saints, and I actually think we're getting some value with New Orleans. They're off those three straight losses. But listen, guys. Being at home against Philadelphia, losing by three, going to Kansas City and losing, and then putting a loss at Atlanta in the middle, a much improved Atlanta, that they had a 51-yard edge, but they lost that game because they were minus one turnover. Losing three in a row, being two and three, but I have them actually as the better team. Great value. Two systems say to fade Tampa Bay. We will do exactly that. The Saints, our NFL TNA game of the week all right it is time for some of those best bets that have finally been cashing at a much higher rate it's just taken me a little bit of time to catch up with the rest of the group marco d'angelo we're gonna let you go first because i stole your best bet from this week's show so i'm gonna play nice here but before you get into it can you please tell me what you have going on over at wagertalk.com well, we've got a special going. Kelly, it's been going great for us. 2024 has been a fantastic season, and we're off to a good start with the football, especially those 5% plays. We hit another one last week. We had the Arizona Cardinals 4-0 this uh, season with the 5% in football, and now on a 12-2 run with those. You can get the rest of 2024. That's every play Every sport comes out to less than $7.50 a day. Remember, we sell the daily packages for $39, uh, weekly $99. You're going to pick up uh, everything through the end of the season for $595. As I said, that's just $7.50 a day, and it includes all of those 5% plays. And why is this so special this time of the year? Because everything is going on. We've got hockey underway now. We've got NBA just around the corner, followed by college basketball. And speaking of NBA, over the last four years at Wager Talk, we're the number one NBA uh, handicapper, 198 units of profit. Uh, head on over to my homepage. You can get there going to wt.buzz backslash MD to check that out. Um, this is a limit time offer, so hurry to pick up that. And let's keep this thing rolling with the best bets. Nice week last week. And sorry, Teddy, I got to do it to you. You came in and gave us just a tip in that Denver game. I'm coming in and I'm swinging the whole thing, baby. We got a best bet. We're going against the Denver Broncos for all of the reasons that you said, but it's going to happen right now. And I'm going to look at the L.A. Chargers. 
minus the points on the road. Denver's 3-0 and the last three weeks. But let's be honest about it. Look at those three wins. They did beat Tampa Bay. Yeah, that looks like a quality win. Tampa was playing well. Well, pump the brakes. They caught Tampa Bay the week after their big revenge playoff uh, win. Remember, they went to Detroit, played Detroit in week two. Um, Detroit is a team that knocked them out of the playoffs. So they returned home undefeated, fat and sassy, and Denver pulled the upset. And we were actually on Denver in that game. Then the week after that, they go and beat the Jets 10 to 9. I talked about that. That was a game played in a uh, rainstorm in at halftime. Bo Nix had minus seven passing yards. He ended up with 60 passing yards for the game in that one. And then last week, you alluded to it. The Raiders just shot themselves in the foot, about to go up 17-0. And Minshew throws a pick six the other way, totally changes that game around. Uh, I just don't believe in Denver. Look at the Chargers. Definitely the bye week helped them. Normally, I don't like teams having the bye week early in the season, but this instance couldn't have helped the team more than the Chargers. Justin Herbert's been banged up. Getting that extra week off is going to help him. Uh, also, having that uh, look at what they've played. They've played a much tougher schedule, in my opinion. And they're coming off that Kansas City loss two weeks ago. Again, another controversial call with the Chiefs in that game. That game was a 17-10 game. They easily could have won that game. But having this bye week early in the week not only helps uh, Justin Herbert, but it helps Jim Harbaugh. He's new head coach to this team. He gets to go back, look at what they've done well over the first four games, what they've done poorly over the first four games, fine tune the stuff that was working, change the stuff that wasn't, and bring in some new wrinkles this week for Denver. I like the Chargers here. They get the job done in Denver, and you'll see the counterfeit Broncos here in this one. Let's go ahead and take the Chargers and lay the points is my best bet. Oh, boy. Marco D'Angelo does not believe. Joe Ranieri, who do you believe in this week? Well, I'm going to uh, mix it up here, Colin. I'm going to actually go with uh, with your game that you talked about with your dog there in Washington, and I'm going to look at the total, and I am going to look for an over here. And while uh, totals of 50 or more this year haven't exactly uh, been overfest by any stretch of the imagination, I do feel like this is a game in which these two teams should have no problem getting us up and over the 51 and a half. Why? Well, Ravens games are averaging 57 points this year. That's first in the league. Oh, Washington, those games are averaging 54. That would be third in the league. You've got Baltimore, who's good against the run, but the second worst pass defense in the NFL, going up against a rookie quarterback that seems to have no problem throwing the ball over 10 yards down the field here. Also, pretty quick scoring offense that we have seen from Washington as of late. They have scored 34 or more three times in a row. Lamar Jackson, by the way, has scored 28 or more three games in a row, while the defense has allowed now 25 or more points in four of their last five games. Both these teams have combined to go 8-2 and two to the over this season. I don't like the secondary of the Ravens. I absolutely think Washington is going to be able to take advantage, just like Joe Burrow and company did in that last game and drop some points. However, I also think the Commanders, D, who are we kidding? You're not stopping Lamar Jackson, Derrick Henry, Zay Flowers and company either. Uh, Baltimore has done a great job of absolutely destroying secondaries through the air out of that big, heavy personnel they run. Looks like a run, feels like a run. Oh, look at that. It's not. It's a bomb. It's a pass. This Washington defense, I think, is in for a long afternoon, but I definitely think that Washington is going to get theirs a lot uh, against this secondary of Baltimore. They're not all going to go under when they're lined 50 or more, Cal. At some point, it's going to even out, and I think this is the perfect game for us to get up and over a total that's 50 or more points. That's what I'm looking at for a best bet this week. Yep, I lean towards the over in that one as well, Joe. 
Teddy, let's get to you now for your best bet. But first, tell me what you have going on over at wagertalk.com. So first of all, we're running pretty good right now. I'm on an 83% all sports run mm-hmm. as of today. 71% in the NFL the last two weeks. 100% perfect with college football, big tickets since last November. 67% with my NFL, 5% big tickets since January 2023. So uh, we're talking about an extended track record with both of those. I have my first 5% NFL big ticket play of the season. It goes on Sunday. It's a game we've talked about on the show. It's a game I feel very strongly about. You can get that right now at wagertalk.com or wt.buzz backslash TC. That being said, I encourage you not to buy that play. Why? We've got an incredible deal. I mean, I know I've got fans out there. I know that people hate me and some people like me. If you want to get on board with Teddy Covers, this is the package to do it. All right. It's a full year, all access, every play included, no bait and switch. It's 99 bucks a month. All right, you save more than $800 off the normal price. Just use promo code TEDDY365 at checkout to take advantage of this offer. Again, 365 days, every play, every day. This is the package, you know, and it's pricey. I get it. It's $1,100. But if you want to get on board and really see what I can do for you and your bankroll, this is the best opportunity to do so. Offer expires after Monday Night Football. Take advantage now. Again, promo code TEDDY365. Let's talk about Tampa Bay and New Orleans. I released the bucks on the money line to my clients earlier in the week before Derek Carr was officially announced as out. At minus three and a half for Tampa, I'd rather lay the points than the money line. So this play is not a mirror of the money line play that I gave out to the clients. That being said, with Carr officially ruled out, boy, I want no part of New Orleans right now. All right. Remember that 2-0 and start? That's a long way in the rearview mirror. Their stats from that start are still making their full season stats look very reasonable. Point differential as well. They look like a team. Oh, they should be a winning team. You look at the statistical profiles. Oh, look at New Orleans. They look great. They've lost three in a row now. They've been held under two touchdowns on offense and two of the three losses. They're riddled with key injuries along the offensive line. Their front seven on defense has significant injury issues as well. Their quarterback is hurt. I'll take my chances betting against Jake Hayner or Spencer Rattler. You know, <laughs> uh, no problem. They're playing on a short week. Remember, they played Monday night, a physical game Monday night. They have a Thursday night game on deck. It's a miserable scheduling spot. For a banged-up team with an embattled head coach and no quarterback in the midst of a three-game skid. Tampa's on the other end of the spectrum, all right? They played last Thursday. They have extra time to repair. They played like crap last Thursday (laughs) with missed tackles, defensive mistakes, clock management issues. Those are correctable issues, especially for a defensive minor head coach like Todd Bowles. And they won on this field 26-9 to last year. Tampa, hurricane issues, right? Big problem. No, they left town on Tuesday. Team bonding experience, not dealing with the distractions of hurricane barreling down. Again, they won 26-9 to on this field last year. No surprise they have a similar result this time around. Give me Tampa minus the points as our best bet. All right. And uh, last, because I'm least, or at least I matter the least on this show, because my job is to host – and uh, my NFL season has just been an absolute roller coaster ride. I tried really hard and I partnered with Ralph Michaels last week and finding me some data to support those Denver Broncos and they got it done easy. And then we just get our hearts and souls ripped out by the Bengals. So we're going to try to go for 2-0 and this week, you guys. This one and one nonsense that we've done the entire first five weeks of the NFL season is no more. We're going to take the Green Bay Packers here. We're going to lay the six over the Arizona Cardinals. Now, I heard VR come in and say that this one got bet a little bit, so I need to open up the Wager Talk odd screen and see if that is still the current line. But I do like the spot here for the Packers. Hey, Cardinals, congratulations to you as well as me because I was cheering very hard for you to beat San Francisco from a survivor perspective. But if you remember just – Two weeks ago, they got blown out by the Washington Commanders. This team 
is so Jekyll and Hyde. If they just played the opening drives, we would know exactly who Arizona is, but they don't. They have to play the rest of the game, and this team is so all over the place. We know what we're going to get from James Conner. Look, he should be able to run uh, pretty decently against this Green Bay rushing defense, but – the rest of them, oh boy, that secondary, Xavier McKinney, he's already got five interceptions on the season. I understand Kyler Murray is not the interception king, but he better be watching out for McKinney lurking there in that backfield. Looks like Jordan Love's finally healthy, even though he threw that egregious pick six in the end zone instead of just taking the sack for the safety. Regardless, Green Bay got the job done, and I think traveling back home, they will get this job done too. Lay it with the Packers is my best bet for NFL Week 6. All right, boys, I think that's all we got uh, for the NFL show. Any, any last final words, comments, concerns? Okay, we're going to get you guys out of here. If you guys have any comments or concerns, you hate Marco's trap game. You love that Teddy is selling the Broncos. You think that I'm super square for playing the Washington football. You know that 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 team, those ones. Or you don't like something that Joe Ranieri said about your favorite team. You drop it in the comments because that helps the algorithm. And that makes Johnny Detroit happy. And that makes, well, me happy. So thank you for all of you guys hanging out with us each and every week from Andy, VR, Ralph, Marco, Teddy, and Joe, of course me. We love you guys. Until next week, let's bet on it.